Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick and this is Astro Exploring. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to remove gradients from your astrophotography and to do that I am going to be using Adobe Photoshop. I'm sure this process will work equally well in other photo editing software uh, but Photoshop is my tool of choice. So um, I'm going to take you through two processes. One of them is a paid plugin um, but I don't want to be that guy that says, oh, look at this really cool thing you can do and, and make you go and spend loads of money. Um, so there is also a free way to do this. So I will take you through both of those and I will put a link to the plugin down in the description of this video. So let's get started. So this is an image that I took a couple of months back of M81 and M82. And this is about four hours worth of data, ISO 800, two minute exposures, um, using my Skywatcher 72ED and Canon DSLR. So all I've done to the image so far is, um, obviously I've stacked it in Deep, Deep Sky Stacker, I've imported it into Photoshop and I've um, done some curves adjustments and then each time adding a new layer just to um, sort out the, the levels to keep them over onto this side of the histogram. And so from here, what we are going to do is um, we are going to run the plugin first so that you can see how that works and then I'll take you through uh, the process of, of how you can do that in a more manual way. So. If you look at the top sort of left quarter of this picture, you can you can see um, that the gradients coming in. So this part of the sky and this part of the image is a lot brighter than than this part of the sky. And there's going to be a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is I don't have any light pollution filters, and the position of these galaxies um, means that I'm shooting through a fair amount of of light pollution. Um, so that is there's one reason for it. So as I've as I've done my my curve stretches to the image, it's just started to blow this part of the the sky out of proportion. Um, but that's not to say that this image can't be saved. So the plugin that I'm going to use is a plugin from RC Astro, and it's called Gradient Exterminator. You might be familiar with it, and you can actually so this this costs fifty uh, US dollars. Um, which converted, I paid for this on a, on a fee-free uh, credit card, um, it converted it to about £42. Um, so it is a paid-for plugin. However, you can have a free trial for 30 days, so you've got a, you've got a month's worth of, uh, of playing around with this. So if you've got loads of um, images that have this gradient issue and you've struggled with it, um, you, you've got a free trial there. It's important to highlight that while um, I'm trying to remove the gradients from this image, if I hadn't applied flats to my images before I stacked them in Deep Sky Stacker, this image would look a lot worse after these curve stretches. So um, taking flats is still really, really important and using these uh, techniques are absolutely not a substitute for taking flats. Um, so that's, that's really important to note. So. What we're going to do is we want to smooth out this background so that it is all the same colour, but I don't want to touch um, the galaxies. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on these galaxies. And I'm going to use the lasso tool to select uh, the area around the galaxies so that I can make sure that these aren't touched with the gradient, otherwise it will start to remove the colour of, of these as well. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm just going to circle around M81 and then I'm going to come over and do the same for M82. I'm only doing this rough, um, let go of that and that's now highlighted the two galaxies. From here we're going to go to select inverse what that has done is has now selected everything in the image apart from these two areas that I've already circled around. So from there we're going to go to Filter, RC Astro Gradient Exterminator and there are different settings for this. Um, for this image I, I've not stretched it, I've, I've done four curves but they, were, they weren't very aggressive curves um, so the, the gradient isn't huge so I'm just going to leave it on, on medium and medium but you may need to adjust 
these um, based on how, how badly the gradient is in your image. Um, and make sure that balance background color is ticked. And we'll hit OK. And that's going to run. It only takes a few seconds um, on medium and medium. If you've got it on a fine and high aggressiveness, it does take a little bit longer to run. And there we are. So that is run, and you can see the difference that that has made. So if I just deselect that so that it stops uh, flashing, you can see that we've now got a nice, smooth black background. So if I just turn that layer off, that is how it was before, and you can see the, the histogram there, and that is what it looks like after running that. And from there, we can um, then readjust our our levels. We've got quite um, quite a bit to play with there, so that so that is good. Um, and from there, now that we've we've smoothed that out, you might be able to uh, to stretch that these galaxies a little bit more, um, or just go into the rest of your astrophotography workflow. Um, but I recommend that you do run uh, or do your gradients processing after you've done your curves, because otherwise you're going to be um, trying to mess around with data that you don't necessarily want and it's going to um, make the rest of your processing a little bit more difficult. So that is, let's just get rid of that, that is the uh, paid way uh, of doing that. Like I say, you get a free trial for 30 days, but that is the paid way of, of doing it. The free way of doing that, and we're just going to delete that layer and create a new one and start again. Let's even give it a name, gradient removal. To do this the free way, we're essentially going to create our own flat file and subtract it from the background of this image here. So to do that, we need to copy and paste this whole image into a new file. So I'm going to do that by pressing Control A and Control C to select all and copy. Uh, on a Mac, that would be Command A and Command C. But, um, alternatively, you can use the select all and copy from there. Um, and then we're going to go to File, New, hit Enter, and Control V to paste that in there. Now, the first step of this process is to use the Clone Stamp tool, which is this um, stamp looking tool here. So we're going to essentially remove the galaxies from this image by using the, the clone stamp. And so zoom in on your galaxies, select the clone stamp. Now you'll want to adjust the size of your stamp based on the size of object that you're trying to uh, remove. So I've got mine set to 100 pixels with a hardness of zero. Um, and I th that that will be fine for me. So I will leave that as that. Um, what we want to do from here is you want to hold down the Alt key and click on a, a nice patch of sky that's, that's clear of stars that, that is next to the galaxy in question. So if we start here, I'm going to select this bit here. So hold down the Alt key and click there. And then you're just going to want to brush over the galaxy. Like so, I'm, I'm only doing this quite rough for the purposes of this video. And again, hold down the Alt key for the second galaxy and just brush over over that. So now that we've removed the galaxies, we now need to remove the stars and I recognize this looks a bit odd but it will look it will look better at the end <laughs> trust me. Um, so we now need to remove the stars and there is there's a few ways that you can do this. Um, the way I like to do it is I like to go to select color range and highlights. The fuzziness, I think the default is 20%. I leave it on, on 20, that's fine. And you're just going to want to 
adjust this slider here for the range and what that will do is it will sort of select more and more stars as you come to the left so if it when it starts doing doing this to your image you've gone too far so you need to come and take that back to about there and hit OK. That is then going to select all the stars. It might take a second because there are quite a lot of them in the background. OK, so now that we've got our stars selected, I just want to zoom in on some of the bigger stars and make sure that we've covered them nicely. And we have. If you need to expand your selection just to cover the stars uh, a little bit more, you can do that by going to Select, Modify, Expand, and the default is two pixels, um, but you can set it to, to whatever you want. I don't need to do that, but if, if you need to do that on your image, that is how you would do that. And from here, we are going to go to Edit, Fill, Content Aware. Now this is a... Um, this is actually a method that you'll see in a lot of um, other types of photography um, where basically you're using, we're going to use the background to fill the space that is currently occupied by the stars essentially. So by doing that we're going to remove the stars entirely. And we want, um, so we want to select content aware from this drop down, opacity 100%. And you can play around with the mode. I find that normal works fine, but I've also had plenty of success with darken. Um, but I'm going to leave this as normal and hit OK. OK, so now that that has run, if I hit select and deselect, so you can see that all of the stars have now completely disappeared from the image, but we have a few sort of strange areas. So you can see where I um, painted over the um, M81 galaxy earlier. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to reduce the noise in this image and it's going to create a nice flat field across the whole image. So to do that we go to Filter, Noise, Dust and Scratches. Now I ran this earlier so that's this is, this is how I, uh, these are the settings that I had earlier, but essentially a radius of 80 and a threshold of 0. And if you toggle the preview, you can see the before and after. So if we look at if we look at this part of the uh, the image here, you can see that the imperfections that were created by my ham-fisted attempt at um, removing a galaxy um, are completely taken away when we uh, when we apply this noise reduction. So we're going to hit OK to that. That's going to take a few seconds to run and you'll see that that then creates a nice smooth image which just has the background color that we want that we can then remove from the uh, or, or subtract from our normal image so from here we want to go back to our original image and let me get rid of these strange lines there we go so to apply this image into here, all we need to do is go to Image, Apply Image, change the source to Untitled 1, because that is our other image. And you can already see the difference that that has made to this image. But I'll take you through the rest of the settings. So we want, to, we want the layer left as merged, channel RGB. The target is obviously the uh, the image that we are on and the blending mode you want to make sure that that is set to subtract and opacity 100. Now something to play around with here is the offset so by default that won't be set to 30 if you've never done this before so you can have a play around with it so if I just set this to 1 you can see that that creates an image that is way too dark and you actually lose quite a lot of the galaxy. If I set it to 60 you can see that creates uh, a background that is really grey, um, which we'd be able to adjust in the levels. But let's you know let's apply this properly. Um, Thirty seems to be an okay number for this image. 
Um, so if I toggle the preview, you can see that is what it looked like before we subtracted the flat file that we've just created, and that is what it looks like now. So I'll hit OK, and again, you can see that that is comparable to the uh, gradient removal, but obviously it takes a lot longer um, and can be a bit more of a pain to, to do. This uh, is fairly straightforward because these two galaxies are, at my focal length are quite small. If you were applying this method to an image of, say, the Orion Nebula, where even at a focal length of 420, the Orion Nebula is going to take up a good, a good portion of the picture. Um, this method may not work quite as well, however, uh, the gradient removal um, plugin will work equally. Uh, it will still work just as well as it did for, for this image. Um, so I chose to buy the plugin because I've started using it in every image that I uh, process. And you can see me going back and processing this image, I've still got a lot to do to this image before it is um, finalized in its processing. But I published this on my Instagram a couple of months ago. Um, and you can see that this is the exact same image and exact same data, by the way. Um, but you can see the gradient on here because I was trying to stretch the image so much just to get the detail. You know, I, I'd worked really hard for that image, so I wanted to get as much detail as I could out of that as possible. And if you want to see how I captured these two galaxies, go ahead and click on this video that is now showing on the screen. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and found it useful and make sure that you do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notifications to be notified every time I upload a video. I'm Nick and this has been Astro Exploring. Thanks for watching.